Hey guys, Raleigh Jones with RouterBeast.com coming at you with another uh, video series. This time we're studying the iOS XR series, which is an iOS and internet network operating system by Cisco that's typically used on their uh, service provider platforms. And so uh, the ASR 9000s, the, uh, NS, uh, the NCS 5500s, uh, those service provider platforms are going to use the iOS XR platform. And so so in this video series, what we're going to be doing is we're tacking, we're tackling, uh, we're tackling the uh, the comparison points, some of the differences in the iOS versus the XR uh, platforms, and so we're going to take a look at some of those commands uh, as such. And so let's jump right in, guys. Let's jump right in. Okay, so in this lab, we're going to be using a topology that includes uh, that includes I, uh, iOS XR devices that you'll see here, uh, as well as uh, as well as iOS devices. And so in this topology right here, we've got the PE1 and the P1 routers that will be used for the demonstration that we'll be doing. Uh, you know, most of our demonstrations that we'll be doing. Uh, this topology will be something that we can continue to build out. As we move forward uh, to build MPLS, um, you know, provider cloud, uh, these uh, these routers over here, these you know, these routers out here, they're going to be going to be configured as uh, customer edge routers, but the XR devices are going to be the um, the PE routers or the provider edge routers that we will be configuring, and primarily, like I said, we'll mainly be focusing uh, for XR purposes, the command line purposes. We'll be comparing what's going on on PE1 and P1, uh, the P1 routers there. Okay, so when we talk about uh, the comparison points between iOS and iOS XR, uh, some of the main configuration points that you will notice right away is that iOS XR configuration changes don't take place immediately. Unlike iOS, when as soon as you uh, you know, make a configuration change, you'll see that configuration change uh, you know take place right right away, and it'll go into running configuration right away. With iOS XR, you know, similar to you know anybody who's worked on Juniper routers or whatever, we have to actually use the commit command, which uh, will then commit a candidate configuration, and so we'll we'll be playing around with that, and so uh, you've got to commit those changes before uh, before uh, they take place. Uh, uh, you've got you, and you, so therefore you can also check your configuration before applying it using that show config command uh, and so as as it as it is it's a, stu, a two stage configuration process and that allows us to be able to do rollbacks and uh, provides a bit more stability in your uh, configuration okay uh, you'll also notice as we move forward that uh, the iOS XR tends to be more feature centric versus interface centric and so therefore uh, in in some of the ways that you might configure things uh, from, from say a routing protocol perspective on the iOS dev uh, devices or I or even iOS XE, you'll notice that on iOS XR, you'll see the uh, the some of the uh, features. Uh, it will be more feature driven when it comes to uh, configuring some of those same parameters, and we'll we'll deal with that in uh, in future uh, discussions. But let's just uh, let's take a look at what we'll be doing in lab here. In the in this particular lab that we're we're, we're about to jump into, uh, we're going to configure host names uh, and IP addresses on both the P router as well as the PE router. Remember the iOS router versus the iOS XR router. Uh, we'll be configuring host names uh, on on the, each of those devices, and then we'll go and uh, we'll 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 um, we'll take a look at the uh, configuration. We'll do a show command, you know, show config, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, in addition to that, then we'll go and uh, play around. Uh, with IP addressing, we'll configure IP addressing on the interface that connects the two routers. Now, uh, this just happens to be, and I'll I'll just sort of jot this in here. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll just uh, you know I'll I'll draw a little picture here. Um, uh, let's see, this um, this just happens to be um, this just happens to be so on um, on the PE router and the P router right here we've got a connection here this guy is going to be gig zero one this guy is going to be gig zero slash zero slash zero slash zero and so you'll see that as we do the uh, the configuration uh, as we move forward here okay so once again we'll then sh do some show commands we'll be using show config uh, we'll also be using uh, we'll also be using um, um, 
show IP interface brief as well as uh, as well as we'll be doing ping uh, as we go forward here as well okay so let's uh, let's jump in now by the way we are using uh, we are using um, instead of using GNS3 in this particular instance we're going to be using uh, we're using viral and so um, so over here in viral um, first thing we'll be looking at is this iOS router okay and so one thing you'll notice right away by way of distinction or comparison point is when you look at the router prompt well one thing when you when you log in you you'll recall on all iOS devices you come into uh, what we call user mode and we actually have to type enable to get into enable mode or our privilege mode uh, you know to that to that privilege mode prompt but you'll notice here that the prompt always includes the host name uh, here and you'll see that it looks a bit different on the iOS XR platform so let's uh, use the default username and password which happens to be admin and admin sorry admin 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 okay so you'll notice that the prompt here right away you'll see that uh, the prompt is a bit different so looking at the uh, looking at this prompt move it up a bit so you can see it uh, so we've got RP which refers to the uh, the type of uh, the type of module or the type of uh, line card that you're using uh, you know or that we're looking at at this particular time so that's the route processor uh, looking at uh, the slot and the module you know the, each of those zero and zero um, if you if we were doing a uh, if we were doing a multi um, a multi chassis feature or or should I, or should I say system uh, where you've got um, um, where you've got the um, or should I say not not a multi chassis system well, it's multi chassis but multi shelf a multi, what we call a multi shelf system uh, then you might see uh, on this um, on this rack right here so you've got the rack number which is after the route processor uh, you might see a one uh, if not zero, if you're if you're using a standalone, like in the case of this XR box right here, it's a standalone box rather than the multi shelf. And so you know, you see, when you're using standalone, it shows as a zero. And then you've got uh, another zero for the uh, slot. And then of course you get down to CPU, CPU uh, zero. Uh, this refers. This is the module itself. And then finally, after the colon, you see the uh, after the colon, you see the actual host name there. So that host name, the default host name for XR devices is iOS, whereas the default host name for iOS devices is uh, is router. Okay, so the host, so the default host name there is iOS, and you can see that uh, listed after the route processor, the uh, the 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 rack, the the slot. Uh, the module, you know, you know those those items that are listed there. Okay, and so so that's one thing that you notice right away the distinction between the way the router prompt actually looks. The next thing we want to take a look as take a look at it as we go here, as uh, as mentioned, is that we're going to be configuring host names. And so let's jump in and configure host names here. Okay, so over on the over on the um, over on the uh, the XR box, notice we still use the config t prompt. Okay, or should I say the config t command to get into global configuration mode? Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to configure host name. Okay, so the host name here being router beast dash pe dash one. Okay. So notice when we can when we when we enter that command, notice it does not change the router prompt. Now anybody who's been used to using iOS, just like what we're about to see here, you are used to seeing that host name, you know, the, the host name change in the router prompt you know right away. Uh, so if we do this on this guy right here, the um, the iOS device, router beast dash P1. Okay. Notice that the host name changes right away, and the actual prompt changes right away. This is because in XR, this this configuration that we just did is not something that goes into running configuration right away into that uh, into that running configuration or or, or the or the RAM memory right away. What happens here is it goes into what we call a candidate config, and so let's look at the, con the candidate config by using the command show config 
press enter there and you'll notice that the candidate config includes the changes that have not been made yet and so these are these are changes that are waiting in the wings just chumping at the bit ready to go as soon as we hit commit however at this point there is just a candidate config and it's not committed as of yet so if you attempt to uh if you attempt to you know do the exit command now you notice i'm back over on X, on the ios platform right here on the ios when i do exit notice it just takes you right back out to the use the uh, privilege mode prompt however in xr if i do that same command that exit command notice that it prompts me and says hey uncommitted changes found commit them before exiting yes no or cancel now you'll recall even in ios or ios xe that if you are prompted with a question like this that the default is going to be found in those brackets and so notice that the the default is found in the brackets here being canceled so if I simply press enter it's going to take whatever that default answer is and so if I press cancel what will happen is it'll keep me in this configuration mode this global configuration mode without uh, doing without doing anything it just keeps me right there if I type if I type in yes then it will commit the changes you know which means that it'll make the changes that that are uh, waiting in that candidate config um, it'll commit the changes and it'll exit however if I type no then it'll exit out of configure of the global configuration mode without committing those changes what I'm going to do is I'm going to press enter which will take the default which is cancel because I want to stay right where I am um, and so notice nothing changed the candidate config is still there okay and what I want to do now instead of instead of uh, instead of you know instead of going ex instead of exiting out right now I'm going to go ahead and do a commit okay so when so notice now once I've done this commit it keeps me in global configuration mode but notice that the router prompt has changed okay but this is because I have committed that that uh, that that uh, candidate config and so now there is no longer a candidate config there you know there's nothing there waiting to uh, to be configured because now we've committed those changes okay so that's one of the key distinctions right there and we're gonna play with that key distinction a bit more as we move forward but let's look at the next instruction here in the uh, in the lab The next instruction is that we want to configure IP addresses on the interfaces that connect between the two routers and you'll remember that I that I gave you uh, for for the P one uh, the PE one router that interface is gig zero 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 okay and so for the P or the P one router that interface is going to be gig zero one okay now uh, in a future lab we will see that uh, actually there is more than one link that I have configured between these devices but right now we're just playing with that single link uh, that's going between these two devices and so let's jump back over on our routers and we're going to on the PE router we're gonna go interface uh, gig zero 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 and notice here I'm going to simply type in IP address just like you've been used to doing in any in uh, in any of your other configuration uh, your options you know being iOS configuration I'll still configure with the IP address uh, but actually what this is, is this is actually the IPv4 address okay remember you we can configure um, we can configure IPv6 or IPv4 the default if I simply type in IP address it you know it will uh, take it will take the default of IPv4 here okay so we'll use 10.1.11.2 for this guy and use a 24-bit mask just to keep it simple here and then we'll do a no shut and so notice here uh, I'm gonna try to do a show config from this prompt and notice what happens is that uh, it, it gives me that candidate config right away okay it shows me the candidate config so notice I didn't have to actually exit back out to get to global config or anything like that I can see the candidate config right here okay so that's what's waiting uh, waiting to be configured once I do a commit this time I'm going to do an end end there to get out of that uh, get out and it's going to of course prompt me to 
commit those changes and once again before we did a cancel which was that default and that kept us right there in that configuration mode and then we can then we can uh, commit it with the commit command this time instead of actually committing with the commit command I'm simply going to type yes okay by typing yes I'm actually still committing the change as it's as it says here okay commit the change before exiting but it'll also exit out of uh, that configuration mode and puts me back at privilege mode there okay so over on uh, so by the way actually I, I, I meant to I meant to show that that uh, that that change didn't take place there but it doesn't matter okay so we see that configuration has been committed now and it shows uh, in our show IP for interface brief, we've got the IP address. We've got up, up because we did a no shut here. Okay, so now we're going to go over to the iOS device and do the same thing. Basically, interface gig uh, habit gig zero one IP address ten dot one dot eleven dot one in this instance dot zero and do a no shut and end notice there's nothing about any commit or anything like that because we're not on the XR box we're on the iOS box and so show IP interface brief and which is very cool that you know once again some of these same commands work between the platform some of these same show commands that you've you know you've grown to love you know to know and love work on both the platforms uh, but notice now we see that the uh, interface is up and so we're going to do a ping 10.1.1. I'm sorry dot uh, 11 dot 2 and it takes a moment to do the ARP you know remember uh, you, you'll send you should see five bangs in, in a successful ping but that first dot indicates the time that it takes for the address resolution protocol uh, to find to resolve the layer 3 address to a layer 2 address uh, the layer 3 IP address that I'm typing in it has to be resolved to a layer 2 MAC address and and uh, you know so that that uh, that packet is completed so that uh, we can send those ICMP packets that's the reason why we see that and then, so if I repeated it you would see all five bangs there and of course if we do a ping from the other side we should see basically the same thing 11.1 over here and that goes straight to uh, the five bangs there okay so what we've been able to do in this in this lab is we've uh, we've verified some of the distinctions between the way iOS works and iOS XR remember that you've got to use the commit command uh, to actually commit a candidate config you can always use that show config to see what configuration is there in, in in the candidate configuration uh, we've configured an IP address on each of the interfaces between these two devices and we've confirmed with show uh, show IP interface brief as well as uh, with ping we've confirmed that these guys uh, these guys are uh, communicating and are connected uh, one to the other okay so we've reached our lab goals in this instance uh, I'm Raleigh Jones with routerbeast.com guys I'm excited that uh, that you've jumped in and been you know joined us in this journey see you in the next video thanks